My name is Merlin Sheldrake and I'm a biologist and a writer and I spend a lot of time thinking about fungi uh, and the remarkable relationships that fungi uh, form and have formed over the history of life. When I was at university, um, I was uh, studying plant sciences at university and uh, it became clear that we couldn't understand the lives of plants without also thinking about the many other lives uh, that make plant life possible. And fungi and plants uh, have evolved together over hundreds of millions of years. And uh, so I became very curious about these lives um, that we think about less, um, largely because they happen outside of our view, down underground. Um, but which are responsible for so much. Uh, and when you start asking questions about fungi, you realize how, how little we know. And so it became very exciting for me um, because you're always one step away from uh, a big open question. So fungi don't photosynthesize like plants, um, but nor do they have twitchy muscular bodies like uh, many animals do. Um, animals have to find food in the world and they put it inside their bodies. Fungi do things differently. They uh, put their bodies inside their food <laughs> and they do this by growing into uh, networks of tubular cells which branch and which fuse with each other uh, and the name we give these networks is mycelium mycelial networks uh, is the main uh, lifestyle that fungi make uh, well symbiosis as a word encompasses all types of living together at one pole you might have parasitism where uh, one partner benefits at the expense of the others uh, by causing harm to the others. And at the other pole, you could have mutually beneficial relationships where all the partners benefit from their association. Um, and so fungi do all of that. Uh, and, and so there are cases where fungi can um, grow into the body of insects, uh, alter their behavior, uh, and, and um, puppet their behavior to suit uh, the needs and the aims of the fungus. Um, and there are fungi that um, hunt worms, nematode worms. They grow special um, traps that, that, that attract the worms and then uh, trap and kill the worms and the fungus can digest the worm uh, and all sorts of grisly and diverse ways. So these are organisms that um, go to great lengths to, to get what they need to survive and have evolved in all sorts of different niches uh, and uh, express those different evolutionary histories in their wildly diverse habits. And so fungi can teach us about the interconnectedness of the living world and how uh, we always need to think about where and with whom uh, organisms are living. And um, fungi can teach us about our dysfunctional philosophies of waste. We produce things and they have a straight line from production to landfill, as if it just stopped there. But, uh, but fungi are great decomposers. Without fungal decomposition, the earth would pile up kilometers deep in the bodies of animals and plants. Um, so they can teach us about um, rethinking our dysfunctional philosophies of waste and thinking more in terms of cycles. Um, and fungi can teach us about the power of uh, decentralized, robust networks. They can teach us about the fact that um, life is a process because a fungal network is never fully grown in the same sense that a, a human can be fully grown. Um, they are always uh, growing and changing and remodeling themselves and it reminds us that all life is a story of process and change uh, but also fungi can teach us about the power of uh, what lies hidden what lies beneath the surface so fungi are living networks so we contain networks we have networks of neurons and networks of blood vessels um, but fungi are networks um, they don't contain networks they are networks and so their lives are lived in proximity to all sorts of other life forms. They, um, they live there, some of them um, live in and around plants and plant roots uh, and, um, and can connect different plants together underground. And they relate with bacteria and all sorts of other um, very complex soil food webs uh, underground. And so they are uh, great enablers, they're great connectors. I think of them as a living seam by which much of the world is woven into relation. I mean, fungi have been forming networks for over a billion years. Uh, and so um, for humans, network has become a, a kind of a master concept that we use to describe um, physical networks like the network of cables that 
creates the internet. Um, but network thinking has permeated so many aspects of human life. Um, whether we think about social networks, uh, whether we, um, even in, say, when you're trying to understand the biochemistry of a cell, we use network models now to understand how these um, different aspects of a, a cell fit together. Uh, so fungi are uh, a poster organisms for network thinking. Uh, and I think they can teach us a lot uh, about networks because they, um, they've been doing it for longer than we have. I do think there are things that we can learn about how we build decentralized networks because fungi form decentralized networks. There are so many questions about, about fungi, you know, starting from the very the basic level for one given mycelial network, we know very little about how they coordinate their behavior. How does one part of the network stay in touch with another part of the network? Um, what kinds of um, flows um, go on within those networks to allow them to constantly revise their bodies, to remodel themselves? We know very little about those very basic processes all the way up to a global scale. Um, who's living where? And, and what are they all doing in those places where they're living? Um, and everything in between. There are so many wild open questions with fungi and, 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 and we need to look at both the very large and the very small uh, to start to uh, understand how it all fits together. So fungi is uh, the term given to a kingdom of life. So this is as broad and busy a category as animals or plants. Um, we think less about fungi because it was only in the 1960s that they uh, were designated uh, a kingdom of life. And so um, they haven't had a kingdom's worth of attention. So the Fungi Foundation was started by a, a, a dear friend and a colleague called Juliana Ferci, who's um, Chilean, and she realized that fungi are largely absent from our conservation frameworks. Uh, many conservation frameworks and policies, they mention flora, um, and they mention fauna, and they don't mention fungi. And that's a problem because from a policymaker's point of view, if there's nothing under threat, there's nothing to protect. And so the Fungi Foundation and, and the three Fs initiative that I work with Juliana on is to try and um, to include fungi within our conservation frameworks, to start thinking about organisms which we have historically not thought about enough, because if we don't think about these organisms, then um, all our other efforts to conserve will be um, problematic because if you don't conserve the fungi that enable the lives of these animals and these plants, then the animals and the plants are not going to have a uh, very good time. So um, a lot of this is to do with uh, restoring fungi to um, what we think of as, a, um, as where they deserve to be, alongside flora and fauna. Fungal life and plant life, for example, are inseparable. Whenever we cultivate a plant, we're cultivating fungal relationships. Uh, whenever we eat a plant, we're eating fungal relationships. Um, we have fungi that live in and on our bodies. Um, many of our foods are produced by fungi, and bread, for example, um, or alcohol, um, but also miso, soy sauce, um, all sorts of different fermented foods that we depend on uh, and have depended on for a very long time um, arise from fungi. Um, we depend on fungi for drugs, uh, like penicillin, that's a very famous example, but there are many others. We depend on fungal metabolisms to, to transform and have always done so. So when there are um, polluted environments, for example, there may very well be ways that you can partner with fungi to help us to break down those pollutants or to uh, sequester heavy metals, for example, um, in the environment. This is an area which is under research, it uh, shows a lot of promise uh, and um, uh, it's in a very exciting field, micro-remediation. Fungal networks are are transport networks um, and they are networks of communication. The fungal network has to stay in touch with itself. It does that through chemicals, uh, but shifts in its bioelectrical activity. Um, uh, bacteria can use fungal networks to navigate the cluttered obstacle course of the soil. Um, plants uh, form relationships with fungi which can extend their reach into parts of the soil that the plant has difficulty accessing. Um, the living world is full of um, of signals and cues and, um, and information passing in, um, in very different ways. Uh, and fungi participate in that story for sure. Um, there are so many open questions, so many ways that we might partner with fungi to adapt to life on a damaged planet. There are so many um, extraordinary things that we can learn about how the living world works by thinking and asking questions about fungi. So I'm just excited to see more uh, young minds to start thinking about these organisms and uh, choosing to pursue um, courses where they are um, engaging with these wild um, and wonderful creatures.